Hello, this is the Dutch Homestead and I wanted to show you how I make my white bean and kale soup. Uh, so here's my kitchen and um, here I am showing you the beans that I grew myself in my garden. And actually when I show you this uh, I realize that I still have my uh, woolen skirt on, nice warm. <laughs> um, I will show you later how, I'm, um, how this is uh, made. Um, but yeah, first of all here I have my beans, so what I do is I uh, just always take one cup of beans, but it can also be rice or something else, um, which is dried, and um, add then two cups of water. So one cup um, of the dried stuff and then two cups of water, that's always a nice consistency. And uh, what I do is actually I use a hay box to uh, fully cook it. So I do heat it on the stove, uh, as you see me doing here. But I will uh, later on, when it, once it comes to a boil, I will um, put it in a hay box, which I will show you also. Um, but of course, first um, it does need to come to a, a slow boil. It's, it's um, um, yeah. I think three to four minutes um, before it's getting boiled. And here is actually my hay box. It actually do, does not contain any hay. Um, it has a pillow filled with feathers. And below that you see here a large pot, but I can also use it for smaller pots. Um, and I made this box myself and I covered it with silver lining, just a bit more isolation, don't know if it helps. And then I have here a little uh, tiny cushion that I just um, get on the lid. Um, you need to have as little uh, air room around your pot, so therefore I also um, a little bit clumsy here, <laughs> but I also um, make sure that the pot is really tightly snug in my uh, pillows. And these pillows are actually filled with these styrofoam balls um, because yeah, that, that just um, keeps the, the form better. And here is uh, the feather filled cushion and I just close the lid and um, yeah, you do need to have patience with these kind of hay boxes. Uh, I also heard somebody saying it's a hay madam. Um, oh, and here I show you my skirt. So <laughs> indeed it's a woolen skirt and I always carried it around me um, uh, when I'm inside. And yeah, you just um, are warmer that way. You keep your legs nice and warm. And so um, yeah, that's really nice. And I want to show you um, my garden because Part of this dish I'm cooking now is um, also needing vegetables from my vegetable garden, which is outside. Um, so here's my um, small garden. Well, it's actually um, quite large for Dutch, um, uh, a Dutch standard. So it's 20 meters in length and six meters width. And here you see my arugula, uh, which is doing great, even though it's now um, February, actually. And here you see also my onions. And yeah, they have been growing since February last year. So you can imagine that I'm a bit disappointed that they still don't have any uh, good uh, bulbs. But I also have carrots and that is needed for my kale and bean soup. Um, so here I pull some. Always nice to see what you get and how long these are. It's always a little bit of a small present to see <laughs> whether or not they tried to grow to China or that they um, didn't want to leave the top surface that much. Um, but yeah, here is some carrots. Um, and I think I yeah also needed celery. Um, so my celery is here. Uh, and yeah, my celery is not really the celery you see in the stores. It's uh, a very small um, uh, stock that I have, but yeah, it does taste the same. And I also use the leaves. Oh, and here I wanted to show you, uh, I have actually within my vegetable garden, I discovered uh, a little flower that is uh, about to bloom. I think it's a marigold, but I'm, no, that's not a marigold. Um, not a clue how it's called in English. Um, but here you also have my kale. <laughs> and um, yeah, my kale does have big 
holes as you see in the very front leaf. Um, but yeah, you don't eat holes, you simply eat rest and then it's fine. Um, so indeed, um, I just um, grabbed some of the scale uh, and I always also wanted to show you in the back, it's uh, a little path where um, birds can um, have their dust baths. But here I also have thyme. So my thyme is um, growing near my pond and it's really thriving. Um, so I always have a nice supply of thyme. And I also needed to use rosemary. Um, so here I have a few branches of rosemary, which is quite a sturdy plant. It's uh, doing nice. Um, it's in a self-watering container. Perhaps I wanted to show you um, yeah, in another later video how it does work. But here um, you have my vegetables, of course. Um, they are still dirty, uh, and while I was at it, it, it has been a while since I made this video. Um, while I was at it, I thought I'd show you uh, what I do with my marigolds. These are truly marigolds, um, because yeah, they are really done now, and they have seed heads, and I just wrapped the seed heads in my hands, and um, there are loads of uh, little seeds per seed head, and I just... Um, cover them uh, with my rake and um, yeah, have these indeed uh, um, for next um, springtime or how do you say that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and here you see me. So I always say to my friends, you don't need to have um, a uh, subscription to a sports uh, facility or something. I work in my garden and that's enough sport already. Uh, here you see indeed me uh, cutting things fine because I always make my own compost. And so here we have the um, gathered um, uh, vegetables for my soup. So I have um, these carrots and kale and celery. And I just get off the greens and this is what is getting inside. So a nice bunch, very freshly picked. And of course, uh, once I bring them inside, all needs to have a good cleaning. Um, you always need to do that. And if you're wondering what that is, that hangs uh, at the knob of my tab. It's um, a bag which I use for tea leaves that's drying and then I can throw them away without the hassle of it's um, sticking to the sides. So for the kale, I do need to um, get rid of these a little bit tougher stalks. If you have a young kale, you can leave them in, but I don't like them so much. So I just uh, get these out and chuck them in my waste basket that I use for garden stuff. And here you also see indeed um, <laughs> somebody else has nibbled on my leaves. Um, and so I don't like to nibble alongside of that. So that's the reason why I um, cut away these pieces um, so that I have my own <laughs> a little bit of greens. Uh, and this is, for instance, such a long, young leaf. So you might also uh, do not need to cut away the ribs. And here you have my um, very peculiarly grown uh, carrots, <laughs> you don't see them in this way in the stores, I guess. Um, but these also need to be cut and I'm not very strong in my hands, as you can see. So I have a little bit of difficulty getting through them, but um, yeah, they need to be cut fine as well. Don't know if I show you all. I think I am quite doing a lot with these carrots before I go to the next <laughs> part of the soup making. Uh, yeah, it has been a while since I made the video and then I heard that the sound was awful. Um, I did try to speak during what I made, but um, yeah, you ca could hardly hear me. Um, so indeed here I'm also explaining that this is indeed just dirt. You really need to just give it good um, wash and then you can leave it uh, and rinse it and get rid of it, like I do here. 
Um, and I should have closed my cupboards. You really can see that I love my chocolate there. Uh, but here you also have, it's not dirt, it's just inside of this stalk. Um, you don't need to chuck this away. You can just uh, scrape it off and uh, then you are fine too. So um, yeah, just to show you the things that are from my own garden are never as nice as you buy in the shop, but they are fresher. Um, and um, yeah, they do contain some dirt. And here I make my, um, how did Naisha call it? Um, that's where I got the recipe from, by the way. So Anisha from Rainbow Plant Life. Um, yeah, she has a lovely, lovely channel for vegans like me. Um, and so uh, I really like um, watching her videos, but I do have here a slight twist because I didn't have the sage that she's using. I also don't have any bay leaves, so I just used what I had in my garden. Um, so um, yeah, there's also an onion needed. And as I shown you <laughs> my onions before, um, yeah, um, these are store bought, which is a bit of a pity would have loved to have my own onions, but um, yeah, what I had uh, already is gone. And Naisha in her <laughs> video makes um, always things with quite a lot of garlic, and I do love garlic, and I think it's really good for your health. But um, these, this garlic is from my garden, and I don't have that much, so therefore um, I'm using it sparingly. So indeed, one clove of garlic will do for this soup for me. Um, so I just cut it up fine. And yeah, with regards to the onions, actually, um, I um, haven't been <laughs> in a supermarket. Oh, I here now make my um, broth, uh, which is also made from my own stock, so dried stock. Uh, but um, yeah, it uh, has been uh, a full year since February of 2020 that I went to a supermarket. Um, so yeah, it um, uh, has been a while and I was gifted these onions, a bit of a strange gift by my parents because <laughs> I said to them that I do miss them. And so they said, well, you can have what of uh, some of ours. Um, so that's why this is really a treat for me because I do love onions. I here now try to move up the camera so you can see inside. I fail uh, at the attempt. I'm sorry about that. Um, you can only see a little bit of the reflection in the side of the pot, uh, <laughs> but at least I tried. But this is how high my uh, tripod will go. Um, so here in my pan, I first uh, throw in the hard stuff like the onions and the carrots and then go uh, later on the rest of these ingredients. Um, Naisha did indeed uh, also already had the celery in, but I don't have that many stalks. I just have many leaves, so I only do the carrots and onions first. So we'll give it a little bit of a stir. And then a little bit later, the celery goes in as well. And uh, I don't measure anything. It's just um, yeah, what I have in my garden and how many stocks uh, I want to pull. Um, so yeah, there's no rhyme or reason uh, in how much I do. It's just I follow the recipe of Nisha quite, um, yeah, without uh, that much of attention on the volumes. So this is now cooked down and I do add a little bit of salt. I don't like to have it uh, very salty and I really actually need to uh, do more with my sea salt, but I want to have my regular salt finished first before I use, I think sea salt is a little bit better for you. At least that's what I heard. Um, and then the garlic goes in, that one clove that I had. And then, yeah, my pepper, so I don't have any grinder. Um, <laughs> so I grind them uh, using uh, uh, just the mortar and stone. And I just add a little bit of pepper. I always like to have some hot things like pepper. 
and give it a little bit of stir and then the broth goes in so indeed it's uh, my homemade broth it's uh, nice to make that uh, just uh, cooking down your um, uh, onion peels and um, other stuff that um, lies around or ah, and here you have my hay box again so it's in the corner of my room and I'm sorry that there's quite a lot of cables around <laughs> that's all from my computer um, but yeah, here is my so I think it is about three hours since I went to the garden and um, yeah did some uh, gardening and uh, so yeah you can do it I think with less um, but this is um, yeah how I came to it so there the beans go that I dried myself they were indeed from last harvest of 2020 and um, give it a little bit of a stir ah and then um, she uh, Naisha also had a uh, a potato and I did have potatoes in my garden not that much regretfully um, but I'm all left out and I did have a little bit <laughs> and I really been a little bit of this um, mashed potato um, powder um, but that works fine and you don't need that much actually to get it a little bit uh, smooth and uh, uh, yeah have it uh, the, the taste of the potatoes so just a few small scoops and then my um, uh, garni how do you say, how did she herb carni I don't know how she said it um, I also um, wanted to add some chervil which I have here <laughs> um, not really the nicest way to <laughs> have it um, filmed but okay and here um, lastly so it all came to a boil and lastly um, I add my kale that doesn't need to have a lot of time it just needs to get a little bit um, smooth and I remove the um, how did she say that it's blah 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 garni <laughs> but I'm not sure what the first part of this word is. Bouquet garni? Ah, bouquet garni? Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps filait I wanted to say. That's, that's not my language either. <laughs> um, yeah, so here I have my cherf, cherfil, cherfil I guess it's called. Um, I'm not really doing that fancy kind of stuff when it comes to having a little bit of um, garnish on your soup but um, now she showed this to me uh, I really thought well <laughs> let's try it and it's actually nice you just have the few uh, first scoops um, of your soup uh, with that extra taste um, and here's my very old-fashioned blender. It's uh, a blender I received from my parents. I actually have quite a lot of appliances that I still have from my parents. I'm a frugal girl and, um, well, I if it still works, uh, why not? So, um, yeah, this blender is doing perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, uh, she said, um, Naisha said um, to just blend half of it. So you do have a few of the bigger pieces around as well um, so I did I'm a good listener <laughs> and um, yeah here I serve my soup and it was really swell it was a very good soup and um, well thank you Nisha for your um, uh, explanation on how you made it and it was really nice because it were actually the, f the, the ingredients I had already in my garden and that makes it double so nice I guess so here comes cheerful and what she also did was a sprinkle of olive oil so I did the same and um, yeah here you have it um, so uh, oh, I'm showing you my little spoon with a um, rabbit on it which is a very old spoon I had when I was a child <laughs> um, but yeah here is my um, kale and bean soup so I wanted to show you more uh, stuff next time but uh, thanks for watching for now
Bye-bye.